Hello and welcome to the Blue Open Studio tutorial video series. The topic of this video will be the event logger. And in this video, we will discuss what is considered an event in Blue Open Studio, the properties of the event logger feature, the format or layout of the event file, and we will demonstrate configuring the event logger, saving custom messages via the event logger, configuring the alarm event control object to display the events, locating the event files in Windows Explorer, and viewing the files outside of Blue Open Studio. In Blue Open Studio, an event can be any tag change, including the tag properties, reports saved to disk or sent to a printer, recipe actions, such as loaded, saved, initialized, or deleted, opening and closing screens, events generated by your project security system, custom messages that are sent via the send event built-in function, and various runtimes, warnings, and errors. Blue Open Studio saves all of these events in a log file, which can then be retrieved by the alarm event control object and displayed on a screen. By default, the event log is saved as a series of text files in your project's alarm folder. These are segmented by day, so each day has its own file. Alternatively, you can save the event log to an external SQL database. The event files generated by Blue Open Studio contain a lot of information. Thankfully, we have a layout in the help manual that identifies where each piece of information is located. To find this layout, open up the technical reference and search for event log format. And in the search results, you want to click on format of the event log. Well, that will do is bring up the page for the event log format. And what you'll see here is that it first explains the format of the file name itself. And how the event files are named is with an EV at the beginning and then two digits for the year, two for the month, and two for the day, dot EVT. And then it gives an example of one file name, including its path. And then it will give you a layout of the file itself and how each category is separated and what each category corresponds to. So for example, the first piece of information will be the version number, and then it gives you a description, which right now the current version number is 002. And then the next piece of information is the event type and the different values that could be located for that, and then so on. It's highly recommended that you review this section of the help manual in order to determine and understand what pieces of information you need. Now we'll look at configuring the event logger feature. To get to the event logger in the Project Explorer, go to the Global tab, and it'll be the second item from the bottom. Double click to open the properties and you'll see the event settings window. We'll first need to enable the event logger and then that will allow us to configure the remainder of the feature. And on this window, we have a disable field, which works similar to other disable fields we've seen for other properties or screen objects, where the tag or expression that's entered in here, if it evaluates as true, meaning a non-zero value, it will disable the event logger and suspend recording. And next to that is a button for the event database. Right now, we're using what's called the proprietary format, which is saving it as the EVT files. If we wanted to change this to go to a database, we'll have to go to our project settings in order to do that. And then once we change that over, we can then come in and configure the event database. And then below that are the specific types of events that we can select to record. As we mentioned, all of these here, security system, display, recipes, reports, custom messages, which is that send event built-in function, and finally, system warnings. Below that is the option for enabling recording of tags when they change value. Once we click on tags, now this worksheet section is enabled. 
and we have three columns, the tag name, a dead band, and a message. The dead band is a value we put in for a threshold. So if the tag does not change value greater than this dead band, and that is a positive or negative change, it will ignore the change in value. And for the message, we can put in either static text or a tag inside of curly brackets. And a value change for a tag is detected when the timestamp itself changes value. So if the timestamp tag property does not change value, a tag change is not detected as far as the event logger is concerned. So we will enter two tags into here. I'll right click on the tag name column and select insert tag to bring up the object finder. I will select my project tags and then search for temperature. I'll enter that in and then for the message, I will put in the static text, temperature, change. And then for the second row, I will enter in a new tag called log tag. And I will create this as an integer. And then for the message, I will put a tag inside of curly brackets. And that tag will be a new tag called log text. And I will save this as a string tag. So now we have our two tags created for the event logger. Now we will want to create a screen where we can display those changes in the event control object. So I'll go back to my screens. And I will open my template screen and save that as a new screen called events. And now on my new event screen, I'll make sure I'm on the graphics tab of the menu ribbon. And I will select alarm event under data objects. And I will click and drag to cover just about the entire screen. And then I will open the properties. And for the type, I will drop this down and change it to event. If these properties for the alarm event control object are unfamiliar, please review the alarms tutorial video for a comprehensive description of all of the different properties. For events, the only other thing we need to configure to simply display them are the columns. And we will add in three additional columns. The first will be event time. Second will be the previous. And last will be value. And what we will do then is we will reorder these. I'll move event time up to the top. And then we will click on tag name. And then we are going to change the width from 100 to 150. And then click on message and change its width to 325. And then we will click on previous and we will change the label to add in the word value. And then we will change the width to 110. And then for value, we are going to change the label to say current value. And then change the width to 110 and move that up just above previous. We can click apply here and we can see our new layout take effect on the event object. Once we do that, I will click OK to exit out. And now our event control object has been configured. I will save the screen, close it. And then I will go into my navigation screen to add in the button to access the screen. Copy off my database button and simply change the open function to go to my event screen and change the caption to reflect that. I will save this screen, close, and then I will start the runtime. Once it comes up, I will snap it to the right, snap my development to the left. And before I go to my event screen, I will go to one of my database spies. 
and I will enter in the three tags we configured. The first is temperature, the second is log tag, and the third is log text. Those entered in, I will now go to my event screen. You see we have no events recorded, so I'll come to temperature and I'll change its value. And I get a message about not being able to because of my security group. So I will quickly log in. And then I will come back in, change the temperature. And we now see a new event appear. If I changed it again, we'll see new one recorded as well. And you'll see that that'll come to the top. So if I try to change this again, let's say from 99 to 99 again, you see that it does not record it because it doesn't detect a change in value. And now what I will do is I will first enter in a text. And I'll put in event log test and then change the log tag value. And you now see that the value and the text I put in for the tag have now been entered in as a message. So we've seen how to display the recorded events in the application. However, as we've mentioned, the events themselves are stored into, by default, an EVT file outside of the application. So to locate those, I will first go to my database spy and I will use the get app path function to find the path of my application. We'll open up Windows Explorer, paste that in, and in my application directory, you will see several folders. And the one we want to go into is the alarm folder. Inside of there, it not only stores the alarm files, but also the event files as well. And you see the format here, EVT, and then two digits for the year, two for the month, and two for the day. If I were to open this through a text editor, like Notepad or Notepad++, we see the layout here. We see our version, our event type, the date, the time, the tag, its current value, the user, the full username, the message, the computer name, and then a previous value, if there was one, and then also a response or update time. So this can easily be exported out or copied out of the application and then viewed externally. This is very useful if you're recording things, for example, recipes, loading, uh, or part counts or something like that. You need to trace back and see when an issue or an error occurred. We've seen how the default or proprietary format for the events are recorded and where they're stored. However, you can also store these events into a SQL database. And to configure that, we first have to go into our project settings. So on the menu ribbon, we go to the project tab, and then we open the options. And we will see in the options a alarm, history, and events section. We'll see the history format. And this is where we can configure whether we want it to be proprietary, database, or binary. This is for both alarms and events. So if you change one, you're going to change the other. So once you select database, we now see that we have the two buttons that are enabled. For the alarms, we discussed this in the alarm tutorial video. For events, if we open this, we see now that we can configure the database connection. And for more information on how to do this, please refer to the database tutorial video. And once this is configured and enabled, it will then go to the database instead of the proprietary format or the EVT files. Unfortunately, you're not able to store them in both locations. Two other settings to note in here. The first is the history, lifetime, and days. This is how long to keep the proprietary files. So we can put days in here, for example, 21. And after 21 days, it will delete files older than that. 
So this is really useful for keeping track or managing the disk space that the application and any associated files uh, takes up on the system. There is also these custom fields. And we covered the alarms once again in the alarm tutorial video. For example, when we enter two in here, we now have two additional custom fields that will be saved in to the either database or EVT file. And those custom fields though are only available using the send event built-in function. These fields will not be available by configuring the event logger itself. Once we set the history format for database, if we come back in to the event logger, we now have the option to come in here through the event database button to configure our database connection. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact ProFace America Technical Support by phone at 1 800 289 9266, option 2, or by email support at profaceamerica.com. You can also visit our website, profaceamerica.com, for drivers, manuals, FAQs, and other product and software information. Thanks again, and have a great day.